Today we had probably the singular best, most impressive Ashes of Creation development video that I think I've ever seen. The technology sounds insane and it's all about server meshing. Sounds boring, actually pretty cool. So let's begin, shall we? So to be honest, the dev stream today on the surface, pretty boring. They showed off a couple of slides. Granted, they were animated, but not a lot to visually look at. And it was about an hour and 15 minutes long. I'm going to give you sort of like TLDW, but if you're a nerd and you like these kind of things, go watch the whole thing. I'll leave a link in the description. Now, one of the slides talks about the requirements. And the first thing that I noticed on here is the fact that they confirm no layering. Layering or shards or lines if you play Taris Land basically enables you to have more players on a server, which I'm going to start calling Realm from now because it's just going to make this whole lot easier. But on that singular realm, you could be in the same place as somebody else, but you don't see them because they're on a different layer. I do not like layering, even though I understand the purpose of it. It completely takes me out of the world and Ashes of Creation isn't going to have it. Now, basically, they've made their own thing with their own sort of technologies that they're calling Intrepid Net. Now, I don't think any of the ideas are necessarily revolutionary, but a lot of them have been tried and maybe not quite been successful. So hopefully Ashes can get this right. The key thing is, is that they are going to be having server meshing and very importantly, dynamic gridding. Now, I will explain what those are in a second. So typically a MMO server would be one server per server or per realm as I'm now going to call it. Or what you might have is one realm with multiple servers on it. So a realm is the server that you log into. And then the servers are the actual technical backend servers that are hosting the game itself. Typically online games are like one server per realm or multiple servers per realm, but they're broken up. So you can think of this maybe like in Elder Scrolls Online, maybe each zone is its own server. But what Ashes of Creation is doing is that they're making the entire realm broken up into lots of different servers. And obviously it will all be seamless and they're not instanced. And this is the important bit. So there will literally be a barrier where one server starts and the other server begins. Now, when you actually play the game, you won't see the barrier. But for testing purpose, they actually sort of showed it off. And first they sort of show that you can see people on the other server and they talk about how this is achieved later, but I'm pretty much going to skip this. And then they talk about how you can actually interact with people on the other server. So you can sort of shoot them and fight them and damage them between the servers. The servers on some level are sort of talking to each other and they have to handle a lot of complicated issues. Like if you walk between one and another, you have to be able to see the movements exactly. You have to be able to see what they're wearing, all that kind of stuff, right? It's quite complicated. That in itself is already quite big. As I said, a lot of other MMOs typically have instant servers, but you don't really interact with them, or at least they're never like butted together. In New World, Outpost Rush is its own server, but the open world, I think, is all one. I think that might be the same for World of Warcraft, but maybe it's continent. I don't know exactly. But this server meshing is very important and it's very impressive. And yes, I know that Star Citizen is trying the same thing. It is very similar to that system, but We've not seen it in this kind of MMO at least. And we'll see who gets there first in the actual release game. So you can view each other. You can interact with the players across the servers. And there is like a seamless transfer. All very important. And they sort of showed what they originally planned. And I think what other games have done in the past. I don't necessarily know how Star Citizen is doing it. So I'm not going to make any comparisons here. But they were talking about how they had multiple servers. And then they had this sort of like middleman, the replicator, which was storing some of the data, but not necessarily doing the calculations. And then the players themselves were just talking to the replicator. But what they found here is that it was straight up a bottleneck. If there were too many players connecting to the replicator, then it couldn't like distribute that information quickly enough, even though the servers were doing the heavy lifting. So they basically just ditched the replicator. And now all of the servers talk to each other in a mesh and the players are sort of connecting to the local server. When I say local, I mean to the server that's the closest to them in the game, not in terms of like the world in real life. They do talk about how if one of these servers goes down, then the entire realm doesn't have to go down. It might be that only the players affected go down. Now, a bit of me sort of worries that that could maybe be like, be like militarized. Maybe you could get some advantage to trying to crash a server somewhere, but leaving it up elsewhere. Sort of think like when the whole server goes down, at least that's sort of fair because everybody's either in or not in. Having it be that some people can't get in might be a little bit weird, 
but you know it is what it is then they basically talk about the problem what happens if you have two people who are on servers that are quite far away how do they interact with each other you know global chat whispers auction house information all that kind of stuff right how does the information get passed between those because those servers aren't necessarily connected and if you just have one server connecting to all the servers then that doesn't solve the problem at all then they basically say we created a concept called microservices which sort of kicked off my chat a little bit because microservices apparently have been around quite a bit and other games use them. But effectively, it's sort of like separate servers. You can think of it as basic as that, that are maybe in the cloud that every other server connects to and can talk to. But it's only doing like a specific process. Maybe it's telling you the status of nodes. Maybe it's guild chat. Maybe it's, you know, personal mail between players and that kind of stuff. So that's what they're going with. You have a mesh of servers all talking to each other, basically just talking to its adjacent friend where players can seamlessly sort of fight between the lines, move between, etc. And then you have these microservices that are communicating to everybody all the time as well. And that in itself is pretty incredible and very impressive. Now, apparently that technology has already been being tested, right? So in the Alpha 2 with the NDA testers, they've already been doing that and using that. Sometimes they've had issues where one server has crashed and the testers have been like, oh, what's the cause of that? And, you know, they've put two and two together. So that's in the game. But the next thing is basically dynamic gridding. Now, Star Citizen was doing something like this where the actual size of the servers were changing. In this system, they're basically going to create more servers within a server grid. If there's too many people all in one area, then the game will start struggling. So what they're going to do is fire up more servers that will pick up the stress, basically. And they need to do that dynamically, though, without the player noticing. All of this is pointless if the player starts noticing the seams. You shouldn't notice the seams and you won't notice the seams if things work. This technology with the dynamic gridding is very, very impressive and apparently should be there in Alpha 2, which is pretty incredible. If they can make this work, this will be truly impressive. Now, I do have a little bit of a question that, you know, as a layman, I don't quite understand why Throne and Liberty can basically have like a thousand v a thousand and not have too many problems without having a system like this. Maybe it's client side. Maybe they actually do have a system like this, but they just don't talk about it. I don't know because, you know, in the stream, they were talking about how the devs don't talk about this. So maybe Throne and Liberty does this. I don't know. But either way, this is very impressive and one of the most amazing things I've seen from an MMO dev, to be honest with you. They then go on to talk about it a bit more, but if I'm honest, it's not that interesting. Basically, they start talking about improving the performance because even with all that technology, the tick rate or the frame per server, which is different from your personal computer, was very low. It was something like six frames per second and they needed to improve it. To do this, they utilize something that's built into Unreal Engine, which is basically this spatial grid bucket where effectively they don't consider things if they're too far out of range, but they do it by grids. They literally just don't look at it at all. That saved maybe like one and a half times the percentage performance. Not really sure what that means, but you know, that's what they said. They also basically don't look at nodes. They're either on or they're off. And if they're off, they don't consider it until it's turned on. All right, fair enough. And then they talk about multi-threading and this sort of like innate problem that Unreal Engine has. Apparently, when it comes to servers, Unreal Engine is a standard single thread. Now, this is the cause on your PC. I'm not going to explain that. I don't really know too much about it. But apparently, Unreal servers are single threaded. And what they said is that, you know, as far as they know, it's not been done before, but they then did a custom thing that made it multi-thread, which made it more performant. Now, I don't really know too much about that, but I sort of see standard single thread as being like one sole truth. If you start spreading those calculations around, you know, the, the truth might get a little bit lost, but obviously they've solved that problem and they're happy with it. Conceptually sounds good. Practically speaking, I probably won't notice it. But apparently that saved them 2.4 times the improvement time. So in the calculation, so there'll be more frames per second on the server or the tick rate will be higher, basically. Very impressive indeed. But yeah, like I don't know if it's over-engineered. I don't know. I'm not going to make that claim. I'm presuming that Throne Liberty and those kind of games have different solutions. But this sounds fantastic, right? I don't know if any game has done this on this kind of level. I know Star Citizen is probably the closest and I'm not claiming that, you know, Intrepid are getting there first. But it's very, very impressive conceptually. And it seems like it's working, at least in the gridded section of it right now. And then the sort of like dynamic gridding is coming and it sounds like it's coming relatively soon. Well, with Alpha 2 indeed. Very impressive indeed. I know it's basically like a PowerPoint presentation, but do you know what? 
I was very impressed. Now, when is Alpha 2? Well, I'm going to make a follow up video, which is probably going to come out maybe like an hour after this one. But it sounds like Alpha 2 is not coming until September, but they're still planning on Q3. And do you know what's important? The sales are coming back. We'll talk about that more in the next one. Subscribe. I'll see you then.